advanced delta neutral strategies. Um, I'm Bo. And so who am I? So I have a background in computer science, computational finance from Carnegie Mellon. And uh, after graduating, I've been working at um, a couple early stage database startups doing development in C, C++. Uh, I actually started DeFi relatively recently um, compared to some others here. And I uh, started back in March. Uh, initially, I was just kind of looking for a place to hold a down payment on a house um, because, you know, stocks are a little risky. And so, when, so what that means is I was kind of focusing on short-term, low-cost, stablecoin-based strategies. And that's when I stumbled on this uh, concept of delta neutral. So what is delta neutral? It means that essentially you're just taking a long and short position on an asset simultaneously. And what this allows you to do is kind of take advantage of some of these asymmetric rates across different protocols. So what I mean by that is um, some examples. The perpetual trading platforms, they rely on funding rates to kind of keep assets at peg. And you can kind of find arbitrages across them. Another, another thing is um, just simple interest rate arbitrage across different money markets. So um, you have stuff like Aave, Compound, and um, sometimes they have different rates and you can take advantage of it. Uh, another one is a little bit more complicated where you are um, borrowing and selling covered calls on certain assets. Essentially, it's kind of taking like a naked call um, selling position. But if you have um, limit by hedges at the strike prices, um, you'll, be, you'll be okay. But the one I'm going to be focusing on today is about borrowing and yield farming on uh, decentralized exchanges. So, all right, so let me introduce delta neutral leveraged yield farming. So first thing is um, you want to pick a pair of tokens that have good farm rewards relative to the amount of um, borrow rate it has. The second thing is you deposit stablecoin as collateral on a lending protocol and borrow um, one or both tokens. Then you take the tokens, you put it on a leveraged yield farming platform, and what that allows you to do is you can kind of deposit tokens, form an LP, borrow more, and then um, add that to your LP position because your your liquidity position is collateral for um, for this uh, leveraged yield farming platform. So. And another thing is, as you as you accumulate farming rewards from trading fees and um, just token emissions, you you'll probably want to be adjusting your positions. Um, okay, so how much are you actually making from this strategy? So, first you get the supply APR on your deposited stablecoin, which is nice. Um, the main the meat of the returns come from your liquidity pool uh, trading fees and farming rewards, and as for the negatives, of course, there's the borrow APR on the lending platforms. There's also going to be borrow APRs on the leverage yield farming platforms. And finally, the big one, which is in permanent loss. So assuming you're maintaining a 70% borrow ratio and doing 3x leveraged yield farming, um, this is kind of the equation that you'll be uh, thinking about. So. Let's take an example. So let's say you were to do the strategy on Bitcoin and Avalanche. So let's start. So I'm going to be using Trader Joe as my lending platform. Um, for those that don't know, it's kind of it's, it's a nice like mix of um, what's called like a it, it kind of t captures a lot of components of DeFi together. So I, I like it. Uh, and also also gives you additional emissions for um, depositing, which is always a plus. And then so you take 70%, so that's $70 of AVAX. Um, the, the borrow rate for AVAX is uh, 8.34. And then um, we'll be using Alpha Homura for the leverage the yield farming platform. So in order to kind of take up with 3x leverage, um, we'll need, so we, if we have uh, $70 to start with, we'll need $210 to end, uh, which means that because um, liquidity pools have 50-50 ratios, we'll need $105 worth of AVAX, which we'll borrow from the um, yield farming platform. And we'll pair it with the remaining $105 in Bitcoin. And finally, so we have $210 of total liquidity pool, um, TV, uh, total liquidity pool value. And that's going to earn 9% um, in trading fees and around 9% in to um, Trader Joe emissions. So, if you think about it, what, what will happen, kind of your yearly net position, how it's going to change is 
you're going to end up getting a lot of Trader Joe tokens, um, a little bit more Bitcoin, and you're actually going to be a little bit net negative AVAX because the borrow rates of AVAX are so much higher than Bitcoin. And so assuming no permanent loss, everything goes right, this back of the envelope calculation is like 30.5. 30, 30 so, but we, we need to be a little bit more um, kind of diligent with how we calculate returns. So I kind of took, um, took that formula, took, took this position and modeled it in Python. And um, so you can see, yeah, like it's, it's not, too, not too long. Um, it's a relatively simple position. So, okay, so here's where we kind of run our model back test starting from the beginning of the year. So total earnings, um, so the difference between selling and auto compounding rewards is all those Trader Joe emissions, um, if you were to kind of sell it for cash and re-add that to your um, delta neutral position, you end up getting 2.4%. And if you kind of just held your Joe tokens, or not, uh, you, or sorry, you don't hold your Joe tokens, you kind of sell them for BTC AVAX, you'll end up with 2%. And annualizing it, you'll end up around 30% um, for um, if you were to kind of um, sell emissions for cash and 25% um, if you were to kind of sell emissions back into BTC AVAX. And here's, uh, here's a useful chart for kind of tracking the position over time. Um, we take into account uh, what it takes to sell the rewards, what happens if you're compounding, and um, the effect of a permanent loss has on your position. So you can kind of see um, there, are, there are parts where a permanent loss starts to outweigh your rewards, but um, in general, Bitcoin, AVAX, they kind of move together, so um, permanent loss is going to drop eventually. Okay, and um, here's, here's the actual returns if you were to implement this strategy starting beginning of the year. So if you were to, on the green line here is what would happen if you actually just bought BTC AVAX and held it. So you can kind of remember that we're kind of in a bear market now, so you would have been pretty negative, but the delta neutral position, um, it kind of, it's pr at first is much less volatile and also uh, you see it's kind of steadily accumulating rewards, right? Okay, so let's say, so 30% returns is good, but you can do a little bit better. Um, so what this, what, what, we, what you can do here is you can adjust the short side. So instead of being 50-50 short each token, you, um, you're short a little bit, um, you're, you're short more one side than the other. And what this lets you do is you can kind of take these inflationary farm tokens that you see on different liquidity pools and actually short them um, re with respect to a more stable asset. So this lets you kind of um, offset high and permanent loss, or you can kind of, you know, short the token and um, kind of rebalance that position by just collecting farm rewards. So it makes it a little bit simpler. But as you can imagine, there's going to be some difficulties with this strategy because you're going to need to find people willing to lend you these tokens, which means they're going to take long positions on that, and you're not going to find too many people that take long positions on farm tokens. All right, but uh, here's an example that I tried that actually worked out. So, um, so if you don't know, Orca is a kind of a Uniswap style fork, or more like Sushi Swap because they offer um, farming emissions. Um, but it's 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 a pretty big um, decentralized exchange on Solana. And so you could expect if you pair with the Solana token, they generally move together. Um, so I'm going to start a little bit earlier this time. So back in last year of um, November of last year. So this borrow ratio, what what it means is, I'm going to be borrowing 25% more um, Orca than Solana, which means that um, in order to form the 50/50 pair, I'll need to sell Orca for Solana, meaning that I'm net short Orca. And as you can imagine, the borrow rates look like this. Um, you, Orca, you have a lot of uh, a lot less demand on the supply side, would make, which makes the borrow rates pretty high. Um, but it offsets by the super high emissions that you get in Orca. And okay, so annualizing these earnings, you actually end up close to 126 percent. Um, and now this is a lot more volatile position. Um, so let me show you the charts. Okay, so 
Again, you see something similar where back, you know, back in the earlier this year, there was a lot of just volatility in general. Um, actually, this one is was especially volatile because um, Orca got listed on Coinbase, so there was this one day where, uh, or a couple of weeks where Orca pumped by a lot. So um, that's stuff to watch out for when you're doing this kind of uh, more risky position. But um, but you can see in the end, you know. The math doesn't lie. The rewards will just keep on accumulating, and eventually you'll be fine. Um, so here's here's what it takes. Here's what it will look like um, an actual net position value. So yeah, you'll see this, especially with the selling rewards, um, kind of accumulating the compound method of like accumulating the pair. So Solana Orca is not very good um, because uh, you can see the price of Solana Orca ratio. Um, Solana is actually, or Orca, Orca is dropping a lot um, with respect to Solana. So before you would need 15, so in the beginning you would need around 15 Orca to swap for a single Solana all the way up to around 40 these days. Or 30, 40 at the peak. Okay, and uh, here's an interesting kind of picture of what it would look like if you used um, different borrow rates. So. The one we were talking about was um, the yellow one, which is 25% Solana, 75% um, Orca. You can always go back to the 50-50. Uh, it's the green line in the middle, kind of the most stable of them. Or, you know, if you're really crazy, you can kind of short Solana and go super long Orca. And um, yeah, you can see that doesn't do that's not that doesn't work very well for you. Um, but it did it did work very well in the beginning, you know. Um, back when Orca was pumping a little bit, so. All right. Uh, oh, I guess I guess a cool thing here is that um, if you want, you can kind of switch between the positions, so you can kind of adjust your borrow, uh, your borrow and long on the fly, so to kind of like capture all this movement. But that's more taking like a trading view on things. So all right, some closing some closing thoughts. Uh, number one, you have to watch your limits. So remember your. You have two kind of short positions here. You have your borrow position on your um, money market, and you also have this uh, leverage position on your on your um, yield farm. And both of these, there's going to be different kind of risks. Um, the borrow position has token price pumps risk when because your collateral is stable coin, which doesn't move, and if the thing you're borrowing goes up, your ratio is going to get screwed up. Uh, whereas for the leverage yield farming, your your collateral is the LP pair, which gets um, screwed by a permanent loss, so be careful with that. Uh, another thing you have to watch out for is uh, borrow rates and farming yield. So this is kind of this type of strategy. As more people do it, it kind of makes it worse for everybody else. So um, you, you got to see what people are doing, and um, it make, it's important to, as you, as things change, you know, rates increase, decrease. Uh, you want to be able to rotate as as you see fit. Which means that you kind of want to use um, low gas cost chains, which is why I gave examples in um, Avalanche and Solana. So yeah, in the end, this is not really 100% passive income because there are some strategy monitoring, but uh, you can get pretty close um, if you're just safe about uh, what tokens you pick and what the borrow um, and what tokens you borrow, basically. So cool. So if you're interested in learning more, um, I will be offering private lessons. And this, this is where I can kind of help, help you based on your personal goals, risk tolerance, how much money you have to start. And um, we'll be over, we can go over a few other delta neutral strategies, um, my favorite being that call thing I talked about earlier. And uh, we'll go a little bit more advanced in the quantitative analysis of these positions where we're actually going to be doing simulations, um, trying to estimate based on like previous volatility, what the future price ratios and uh, your yields will be. And here's my Twitter, Discord, Telegram, and anybody have any questions? Please wait for the mic, I'll bring it to you so we can pick it up on the stream. <laughs>